Hi everyone and welcome to the Emergency Physicians ECG course. This is Hisham Ibrahim, I'm one of the Emergency Medicine Consultants in United Kingdom and today we are going to discuss case number 22 from our Facebook page. Before we make a start, I'd like to announce here about this course, From Zero to Hero in Acute Coronary Syndrome ECG. So this is a new course that is available online now that includes 14 different modules, over 10 hours of ECG videos, with regular assessment after each uh, video that covers almost all what I know about acute coronary syndrome ECGs. I think it's full of fun and I think it's going to be really useful. There will be a link to the course in the show notes of this video, so please check it out and see what you think and I'll be really keen to hear your feedback about it. The second and last announcement is going to be our normal EPIC course. That will be a virtual one, one day course and the next one is going to be on the 2nd of December. So to book a place, that will be via Eventbrite and the link is going to be in the show notes as well. So without any further delays, let's move on to our case number 22. This is kind of a fun case um, that focus on a really interesting uh, fact about ECG interpretation. So let's move on and see what happens. So this was a 63 year old male patient presented to ED with palpitations and shortness of breath. The initial ECG showed SVT, so this patient was treated with six milligrams of adenosine, which helped actually to cardiovert the patient back to normal. So suddenly there was a change in the monitor um, and the rhythm uh, looked very different. So here is what the monitor showed to us. This was actually one of my patients. So time for you now to pause the video, have a look at that, see what you think. Okay, I hope you've done that. And uh, yeah, let's uh, let's have a look together. Uh, looking at this ECG, that, that definitely looks like a scary rhythm. And uh, you might think that it looks like VT and, or actually a polymorphic VT, looking at the change in the, uh, in the shape of the um, complexes over this area here. So yeah, you might think that this might be polymorphic VT. Because the patient was stable enough, we decided to get a 12 lead ECG. So here is the 12 lead ECG of the same patient during the same episode. And again, time to pause the video again to have a look at the ECG and see what you think. Okay, so I guess there will be two differential diagnoses here. Some of you might say, yeah, um, we think that looks like a polymorphic VT. Uh, and, and, and yeah, I completely see where they're coming from. Some of you might say, well, actually, it looks like there are some normal looking complexes in some places, so there might be some movement artifacts here that created that rhythm. So, what we're going to be talking about in this video is how to differentiate VT from movement artifacts. To be able to do this confidently, we'll need to go back to an important basic fact about ECG interpretation. It's a golden rule that if you clearly understand, it will make your life much easier when you interpret ECGs. This fact is, when you move horizontally with the ECG paper, you go with time. But if you go vertically, time stops. Let's have an example to apply this to get a good understanding of what that means. So let's have a look at this example of, um, of an ECG that shows something similar to what we've seen in our ECGs. So in some places, good looking complexes and in some places, scary looking complexes. So the rule is, if you go horizontally with the ECG paper, let's actually change the color here to make it easier. So if we go horizontally with the ECG paper, you go with time, which means what happens in this area of the ECG happens before what happens here, which happens before what happens here, which happens before what happens here. You are going in this direction, you are going with time. If you go vertically, time stops. So what happens in this area of the ECG happens exactly in the same time in all these areas of the ECG. So what happens here happens all the way across top to bottom because time stops um, when you go vertically in the ECG. So if you apply this, that means that there was an event that happened in this part of the ECG 
and this event resulted into this rhythm and this event was preceded by a different rhythm in this part and followed by a different rhythm in this part so this ECG showed, shows actually three different rhythms one here one here and one here how about our one let's apply the same rule here so again if we're going to go horizontally in the ECG paper we're going to be going with time so if we go with time we'll notice that yeah it looks like there is what looks like polymorphic VT here but if we go vertically we will notice that there is actually what looks like very normal looking complexes in lead one but below them the rhythm is different and this is very wrong you cannot have normal sinus rhythm here and VT here because actually the events happened in the same time so let's follow the what we think is normal complex and then if you follow it down you will notice that actually this wave here looks different to the one before and the one after it looks more like a peaky normal looking QRS and you can keep going and you will find that actually yeah that that makes sense and if you do the same you can keep going and you will discover that actually each one of these has got a normal looking complex below and if you map them out you will discover that actually they are mapping with what looks like normal complexes here and there and you can keep going throughout the whole ECG paper and you will find the same so the bottom line is you cannot have polymorphic VT here with normal sinus here because these two bits happened in the same time so this is what I'm talking about. So if we apply our rule here, you will notice that if you follow the normal beats, the normal looking complexes, sorry, um, you can appreciate where the normal complexes are and where the movement artifacts are. And if you map them out, they will map beautifully with a normal rate. So actually this ECG showed a movement artifacts rather than VT and all what we need to do is to just calm the patient down repeat the ECG and it was completely normal so let's have a look at another example uh, to just consolidate this piece of information here is another example uh, and again if you look at this ECG and apply our rule looking at this part of the ECG that looks very similar to polymorphic VT but again you cannot have polymorphic VT here and normal sinus here that doesn't fit so let's apply our rule if we go up oh yeah this looks different same here this looks different and down and we'll notice that there is a weird notch here and down again there is a weird notch here and they match nicely with the normal looking beats down here so actually this is another example of movement artifacts and it cannot be polymorphic VT so this was it about this tip so our learning points here are Movement artifacts can sometimes look very similar to VT in ECG and when you move horizontally with the ECG paper you go with time but if you go vertically time stops. Thank you very much for your time listening to me and I'm going to leave you now with this photo of the Cairo Opera House and hoping that I'll be able to talk again to you very soon. Bye for now. Stay safe.